the Proud Boys and Patriot Pair groups have come to Portland time and time again from out of town looking for a fight and the results are always tragic. Let me be perfectly clear. We will not tolerate any kind of violence this weekend. Left, right, or center, violence is never a path toward meaningful change. Peaceful protests is the only path toward change. Those stoking the fame, flames of violence, those coming to Portland looking for a fight will be held accountable. Before I hand it over to our law enforcement officials to give an overview of how this unified command structure will operate this weekend, I also feel compelled to address the feelings of outrage, hopelessness, and heartbreak over racism in America, especially on the heels of the recent charging decision in the Breonna Taylor case. America needs to hear this. Breonna Taylor deserves justice. And this week's grand jury decision was not justice. I know that there are many here in Oregon and across our country that are outraged and absolutely frustrated. Many people are hurting. Through our pain, we must continue to work toward racial justice and police accountability. The people who enforce our laws cannot be above the law. Our justice system is not just unless it works for everyone. In Oregon, we are actively making the changes we want to see in the world. Since George Floyd's murder, we've passed six bills improving police accountability. We've launched a statewide racial justice council to center racial equity in our budget and policy decisions. And we have a team already working to re-envision police training and standards for all law enforcement officials in Oregon. These steps are just a start. There is still much more work to do to create an Oregon that works for all of us. Let's continue that work together. Let's continue to say the names of black Americans whose lives have been taken by racist violence and honor them by recommitting ourselves to meaningful change. Let's work together to create a better Oregon for everyone. Thank you. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Superintendent Hampton. Thank you, Governor. Well, good morning, Travis Hampton, Superintendent of State Police. I think before I discuss what this unified command will look like and what it is, I need to say what it is not. This in no way is an indictment of our colleagues at the Portland Police Bureau for the job they've done or would have done this weekend. They have, they being the Portland Police Bureau, their officers have endured some incredibly mentally and physically taxing situations for over a hundred days while they have done the best they can to keep Portland streets safe. While the governor has elevated Sheriff Reese and I to uh, assume the role of joint incident commanders for a 48 hour period, Saturday and Sunday, it wasn't too long ago that you'll recall that I placed 100 state troopers under the authority of the Portland Police Bureau. It wasn't too long ago that the federal government placed the safety and security of their federal buildings in Portland for a 14 day period under my supervision. So this joint incident command with the sheriff, the chief and myself will bring consistency and continuity of our operations to the city of Portland and it will allow us to provide the best public safety services we can over the coming weekend. The message from this unified leadership is clear. If you want to come to Oregon, to Portland, to peacefully protest, to assemble, to voice your outrage, to voice your concern, we welcome you for that. If your job, if your intent is to come to Oregon to commit crimes, to provoke, to make people feel unsafe in their homes, we do not want you to come here. And we will do our very best to interdict that criminal behavior as it arrives on our streets in Portland. You will see a massive influx of Oregon State Police Troopers beginning tomorrow morning. They will be saturating North Portland, Interstate 5, between the venues of Delta Park and Peninsula Park with our colleagues at the Portland Police Bureau and uh, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office and allied agencies within Multnomah County. We will not talk specifics of our tactical plan tomorrow 
much of it, quite frankly, still in the planning phase, but I just want to let Portland residents know that your state troopers, your Portland police officers, and Multnomah County deputy sheriffs will be out in force to keep you safe. And we also want to send a message that well before the event, if your intent is to come to Oregon to bring incendiary devices, to bring narcotics, to bring firearms unlawfully, we will do our best to take those off the streets. So if that is your intent, please don't come. Then when folks arrive at the venue, we will do our best collectively to provide venues to exercise free speech and to keep hostile parties if they arrive apart from one another. So hopefully we'll have a peaceful day, a peaceful event where we use no force, we make no arrests, and we provide an opportunity for people to feel safe in their homes and exercise their constitutional rights within the city of Portland. So I just want to reaffirm our commitment collectively, how we will work together, how we will bring every resource to bear at the state of Oregon's disposal within the county and the city of Portland. We will do this together and in the spirit of having a day absent of criminal conduct and injury. Thank you. Thank you guys for taking these questions. Um, my question is for the governor and then the, uh, the law enforcement leaders. The last time these groups came to Portland, uh, Chief LaBelle said after the fact that he didn't have the resources uh, to safely get in between these groups. Uh, my question is with more resources here this weekend, is the goal going to be to keep these groups separate before they come in contact with each other so that you're then not having to intervene in what's an unsafe scenario? I'll let law enforcement answer that question. Do I understand this mic needs to rotate? Okay. Uh, Chief LaBelle. Thank you. Our goal is to keep uh, groups separate. Um, this action actually provides us with additional resources that will help us in that endeavor. Um, everything we do is in response to the actions of um, someone in the crowd or someone engaging in criminal activity. So if that activity doesn't take place, um, we'll, we'll be well resourced for a safe event. But the overarching goal for us is to provide a safe space and to keep people from engaging in uh, violence and criminal activity. So quick follow-up on that last time. There were, there were about 30 officers out there. Can we get an estimate on how many troopers, deputies, and officers will be out this weekend? just say that uh, I am confident that law enforcement is adequately resourced to tackle the situation. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Our next question is from Lisa Bayless with COIN. Go ahead, Lisa. Excel. Go ahead, Rosemary. So, Governor, I'm wondering, we've been talking a lot about First Amendment rights for weeks on end now, and it's coming up again with the situation. Would it not have been uh, wise to go ahead and have people uh, maybe not have their events all on the same day? Uh, what's the advice there? Look, um, we, we're really, really clear that uh, hate has no place in the city of Portland and the entire state of Oregon. Um, our law enforcement is absolutely committed to protecting free speech, and uh, they are going to work uh, extremely hard to de-escalate the situation by keeping the groups apart. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to do this weekend. My top goal is to make sure that Oregonians are safe and that folks that want to exercise their right to free speech can do so safely and peacefully. Thanks, Rosemary. Uh, Lisa Bailick sent her question in writing. Uh, she asked, uh, what will you be doing to protect neighborhoods nearby to keep families safe? <laughs> Hi, this is Travis Hampton with State Police to show families that we are doing our best to keep them safe. We 
um, like I mentioned earlier, will have a, a large influx of uniform patrol officers. So these men and women, these state troopers, deputy sheriffs, Portland police officers will be in their neighborhoods along the, the thoroughfares and come out and talk to us. Come learn our names. You don't often see this many state troopers in North Portland. So come out, see what we're all about. Come out, grab a sticker from us. Come out and visit us. Tell us what your concerns are. This is your neighborhood. We want you to feel safe in your home, in your playgrounds, and at your schools. So come out and visit with us. We're going to be there to visit with you. Like the chief mentioned, we hope we don't have to uh, engage law enforcement efforts in, in custody arrests or use of force. We would love to have this be a beautiful, rainy, sunny day, whatever Oregon delivers for us tomorrow, where we are just police officers in your neighborhood to keep you safe and then uh, make you feel comfortable in your own homes. Our next question is also in writing from uh, Maxine Bernstein from the Oregonian. Uh, Maxine asks, uh, why do you believe there is a need to have state police in the sheriff's office and not Portland police uh, meet this unified response during this weekend? We know that we are much stronger together uh, and that by coming together, uh, we were able to assess the needs of this particular situation and determine that this was the right approach. We have been doing that over the last several weeks and months, city, state, and local officials all working together. And we came together collectively and made a decision that this was the best approach, that coming forward with a unified command structure would ensure that people could stay safe and that we could keep the peace. Enforcement act answer the second part of the question. We're getting a lot of feedback. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I am uh, using my executive authority as governor to uh, create a unified command structure. Uh, it will um, create a collective collaborative approach, bringing all of our law enforcement officials together uh, to make sure that we can uh, work to keep people safe uh, throughout the weekend and that folks can participate in uh, free speech activities peacefully. The second part of the question is the tools available. Thank you, Governor. I'll answer in part, then I think I'll pass it down to Sheriff Reese, my colleague. Uh, the short answer to your question is yes, operating under the governor's emergency um, authority, statutory authority, with Sheriff Reese and Oregon State Police assuming the Joint Incident Commander role, we will not remove CS gas as a possibility uh, from these events. We will use it judiciously. We hope we do not use it at all. But um, under this authority, we will make this available to not only state troopers, deputy sheriffs, but Portland police officers. And I will pass the microphone down to Sheriff Reese. I think it's important to remember that our responsibility at these events is to keep the peace and that our goal is to support people's right to peacefully gather and to express uh, whatever message they came to express. We are responsive to the actions of people at these events and we're there to, uh, if we have to, hold people accountable for uh, criminal acts that may endanger everybody's safety. Certainly. Uh, with the use of any uh, tool or option, we're always going to be proportional in our response. And we want to do everything we can to intercede early so that we don't have to get to a higher level of force if it's required to keep the peace. I want to be really clear that uh, the use of any uh, option will be a last resort. Uh, if th there is a need for uh, CS, it would be after a life safety event where people's lives are at risk and we're doing everything we can to protect people and to protect uh, our officers and deputy sheriffs and state troopers. Thanks, sir. Uh, our next question is from Hank Sanders with Willamette Week. Go ahead, Hank. 
Hi. Thank you for taking my question. My question is if people are gathering without a permit, will they be allowed to still gather or will action be taken against that? Chief Laval, do you want to respond to that? So when people gather without a permit, we've had several gatherings the last 100 days without permits. We, uh, we look at these events and just try to judge what's the safest way for us to manage them, what resources we have available. Um, in many cases, uh, people do gather without a permit. We deny permits, we um, approve permits, uh, but when people do gather, we look at it, um, how do we best manage this event? What's the best outcome for people's safety and things of that nature? Uh, we don't really know how many people are gonna show up. This is not the type of thing people RSVP to, so there's gonna be uh, the potential that we get a very, very large crowd. And then given our ability to manage that crowd safely, um, that'll determine uh, what we do. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Um, my question is, we normally see quite a few firearms at events like this. What's the, I guess, what's the policy that you guys are gonna be operating moving forward with respect to seeing firearms at some of these gatherings? Take that. Superintendent Hampton, would you like to take that? Yes, thank you, Governor. <clears throat> we not only have state statute at our disposal, but we also have city code uh, there are some concealed handgun license provisions for people that want to openly carry firearms. We do have situations where people cannot possess them at all, like a convicted felon. And so we deal with this quite often at, at the Capitol, where we, if, if the situation allows, we do like to question the individuals if they are carrying their firearm um, lawfully or not. And if they are not, we educate them or we take appropriate proportion, proportional enforcement action. Obviously, if you see uh, conduct like uh, pointing a firearm at another, that's an overt criminal act, and we expect to take action um, immediately for that, whether, whether that's uh, hands-on by a police officer or through uh, chemical munition, if the crowd is too, uh, too large of a size for us to handle. But we do hope to uh, educate and interdict as much of this conduct as we can before it arrives in the city of Portland tomorrow morning through our uniform patrol efforts, our uniform patrol efforts provided by all three agencies and more within Multnomah County. Sheriff. We have time for just two more questions. Uh, Maxine from the Oregonian had a follow up. She asks, was Mayor Ted Wheeler supportive of this arrangement and uh, did, did you seek his approval for this bill? Absolutely. Um, we had a, uh, a meeting uh, virtually, of course, uh, with uh, local elected officials, including the Speaker of the Oregon House, uh, the Chair of Multnomah County Commission, Deborah Kafori, uh, and the Mayor and Commissioner uh, Joanne Hardesty. Uh, through that process, we came to a collective agreement that this particular tool, that is my using my executive authority uh, to ensure that law enforcement had adequate resources for the weekend in order to prevent violence uh, was the appropriate strategy for this particular weekend and the mayor was um, supportive of that approach. Thanks Maxine. Uh, looks like Lisa Bailick was able to call back in. So Lisa, last question goes to you. Yes, I am. Thanks. Uh, just a follow up. Uh, at what point and where will you put people if you make multiple arrests? I'll turn that over, uh, Lisa, to the law enforcement community. Here's the question, sir. Uh, Lisa, if you could repeat that, that would be uh, uh, appreciative. Question is, if you make multiple arrests, where will you be able to put people? Uh, again, our uh, goal is to not make any arrests, to keep the peace and to have our mere presence as peacekeepers allow for people to gather and to express themselves. If we have to make arrests, uh, we'll use our mobile booking teams as well as uh, police officers and deputy sheriffs to uh, transport people to uh, our justice center for processing and uh, take appropriate action from that. 
clear though that individuals who commit serious violent acts will be charged prosecuted and held accountable